Now that we've edited the controls, when you run your script now by hitting the space bar, the ball should start dropping. Using the V key to now score points when the two scripts are touching. This is a pretty simple game right now because there's only two sprites and one key to control them. Later, we'll add in more sprites to have four different balls dropping and four different buttons that could be pressed to score points. And now you can use the R key to reset the whole game and set the score to zero. Now that we have the base of our game, we can duplicate our first sprite to create more. So right clicking on the sprite from the sprite list, just as we did in the beginning, we can select duplicate. This will create the exact same sprite in your scratch project. Now we can drag that right to the left bottom corner and we're going to arrange these buttons across the bottom section of the stage. Now, in that sprite that we just created, we can go into the costumes tab and edit that first costume so we can have a different color ball and button. So we can edit this one to change it to blue. Selecting OK will save your work in the costumes tab. Now, we can copy the red ball and duplicate that one to make a blue ball. You can rename that sprite that you just created, Blue Button. Now, right clicking on the red ball at the top, we can select Duplicate and copy that one. Dragging over the red ball to the top left hand corner, positioned over the red button in the bottom left hand corner. Now we can edit that sprite that we just created by duplicating the red ball. And we can edit this one to be the blue ball. So we can go into the paint editor and color it blue. You can rename this sprite blue ball and position it over the blue button. Next, we're going to make another set of balls and buttons. So, just as we did with the blue balls and button, we can duplicate the red ball and red button and position them to the right of the blue ball. Go into the costumes tab of the sprite that you just created and change its color from red to yellow. Selecting OK will save your edits. Now you can rename this one yellow button. Now we can do the same thing by duplicating the ball and creating a yellow ball. So right clicking on the red ball and duplicating it, and s sliding it over the yellow button, we can edit, edit its costume to make it a yellow ball. Using the paint editor, you can select the same yellow color and paint that ball yellow as well. Selecting OK will save your work. Then you can rename this sprite Yellow Ball. We can create a fourth button by duplicating the red button again and positioning this one in the bottom right hand corner. We can edit its costume and change the color of this button to green. So now we have four buttons in our project. The last step for our sprites is to add in a green ball. After naming this button, green button, we can duplicate the red ball again 
and slide it over the green button. Remember to look at your X coordinates to make them line up right above one another. We can edit the costume of this ball to make it green just like the button. Once you're done editing that ball, you can rename that one Green Ball. Now we will check the coordinates from the scripts. This can be a little tricky, but if you use the coordinate system underneath the sprite title, you can make it move to the exact spot that it originates in. Now for the red ball, you can make it move to where it's positioned right now. Doing the same thing for each ball, making sure that they go to the exact same point that they originate in. This will take a little time, but it will make sure that your project and game run smoothly. Double checking each sprite that you just duplicated to make sure it is formatted correctly is key to making this game run smoothly. Now that, we, now that we have the balls going to this right direction and location, we can change the buttons to have them being controlled by different keys. So in the blue button, we can set it to B. Then we can move on to the yellow button and set it to letter N. And then change the green button to 
to a different key, which we're going to use letter M. Now, V will control the red button, B will control the blue, N will control the yellow one, and then M will control the green one. And make sure, for each button, you want them to touch the ball, respectively. So in this case, the yellow ball, we want, we want that to be sensed by the yellow button. Same with the blue button, we want it to sense the blue ball. So once all that editing is complete, you should have a pretty good game going. And now in the sensing sections of each ball, we want them to sense the button as well, respectively. So we want the yellow ball to sense the yellow button, and we want the green ball to sense the green button. Now that we have edited each one of the sprites for each color, we can run this script by pressing the spacebar. Once we do that, the balls will drop randomly throughout the project. You can use the V, B, N, and M keys to control each one of the buttons as the balls drop. Every single time they touch, if you click a button and they're touching, then the button will turn to black and you will score a point on your scoreboard. For this game, since we have each ball repeating 10 times dropping, the maximum score will be 40 points because there are four balls. You can use the R key to reset your project. and will reset your score to zero. The final touch to this project will be to import a background. So in the stage section, select the backgrounds tab and import one from the menu. We're going to go into indoors and we're going to select a pretty cool background for this project. We're going to select the spotlight stage. Now this background will be imported directly into your project. And now, when you run your script, by hitting the space key, you should have a disco game going on. Thanks for watching this video tutorial of Drop Hero. Now go out and have fun with Scratch. Thanks for watching.